Welcome to the Ask the Experts show with local celebrity host Steve O. Sit back each week while Steve O educates you with live in studio experts, such as lawyers, doctors, home improvement, and financial experts in their field. Call in and have your questions answered each week at 888 565 1470. Now, here is Steve O with today's expert in their field. Lights on, I guess we're live. Hey, welcome to another Ask the Experts. We get so many emails from you listeners, and I was finally able to accomplish to get not a chiropractor, not something like a, I don't even know what to call it, someone who works with backs. We have the Florida Spine Specialist. We have one of the senior partners, Dr. Harold Dalton, with us today, and we're going to talk about back pain. Basically, that's what it is. And Dr. Dalton, I'm so glad to have you here because we we just got so many people asking about what should I do? I've had this problem for years. And a lot of times they say that they can't find anybody to help them. And I don't know if they're going to an orthopedic surgeon or what, but backs are difficult. But let's start off. Tell us about your practice. Well, Steve, I, I really appreciate you having I'm me so here glad today. To yeah, I, I am thrilled to be here. Yeah, we have a, a great practice. Uh, we're located at 6000 North Federal Highway in Fort Lauderdale. Uh, we have a 13,000 square foot building that is dedicated solely to treating spinal disorders. Uh, we have three physicians in the practice. We have uh, Dr. Kalman Blumberg, who is a fellowship trained spine surgeon. We have Dr. Carnes, who is a clone of me. He's a physiatrist with uh, a fellowship in interventional pain management, as well as a fellowship in EMG and nerve conduction studies. And then myself, who's also a physiatrist or an expert in physical medicine and rehabilitation, taking care of people with uh, significant uh, spinal disorders and uh, orthopedic and neurological problems, uh, but also with uh, extra training in uh, painful disorders of the spine and what we call interventional pain management. Now, my job is to do everything we can to keep everybody away from my surgeon. But that being said, if patients need surgery, we've got to look them in the eye and let them know that this is the only thing that's going to be of benefit to them. What do you tell a patient? Because I'd say it's a misnomer out there that don't, do, don't have back surgery. You well, could end up worse. So what? that's not true, though. So there is a time and place for spine surgery. And if we understand the statistics, 95% of people with back pain do not require surgery. 95%. 95%. And so there is a whole host of different tools and treatments that are available for those 95%. Now... We have to ask, what is what pushes us to looking at surgery? And there are a couple of different things. And I want the, the listening public to be aware of this. If you start developing weakness in an extremity, whether it's a if the lower extremity a foot drop or difficulty getting up from a chair, if you start in the from the cervical spine, if you start having problems with lifting your arms and, and dropping things and having problems with dexterity. If you start having problems with your balance and if you're losing control of your bowel and bladder, these are things that really are red flags for us. Even the bladder, too. Absolutely. Wow. Okay. The, the bladder is controlled by the lower sacral nerves that have to pass down through the spine. And if we start having problems with that, you know what? We need to look into it and it needs to be addressed. Now, but what does need to look into it mean? Well, What's the step someone comes in and has some of those problems? Well, you know, most patients that come to see us, thankfully, don't have those problems. Okay. Um, but really the key to what we do is we, div we come up with an accurate diagnosis. What is the cause of the patient's pain or what is the cause of the patient's symptoms? And that requires a variety of different things. First, it requires that we sit down and we listen to the patient. We take a tremendous amount of time listening to our patients to make sure we understand what they're feeling or what their body is going through. 
The second part of getting an accurate diagnosis is the physical examination, okay? And that's exceptionally important. And, and we test all these different things. We look at muscle strength. We look at the uh, ability to feel things in an appropriate manner. Some people develop numbness, burning, tingling, and that's an alteration of the neural system for whatever the, the reason may be, and we have to find out what that is. But we test, um, we put people through all sorts of, you know, what I describe to my patients is silly tests, but we do this for a reason, to make sure that they're able to do what they need to do safely in their daily lives. The third part of an accurate diagnosis is specialized testing. And for our case, that is either imaging, advanced imaging. We, in our own office, we have digital x-ray, uh, real-time digital x-ray, and, and uh, we're able to do that uh, very quickly and efficiently. Um, many times, the gold standard for a lot of imaging is uh, having an MRI. Do you uh, do that in the office? No, we don't do that in the office, but we work very closely with the um, MRI facilities around that have the appropriate size scanner, the appropriate size magnet. Now, when we image the spine, it, we need a 1.5 Tesla magnet or larger. And so many of the, the scanners that are out there are 0.2s or 0.3s or, or 0.6s, and they don't give us the image quality that we need. So when we end up sending a patient out for a scan, we make sure that it is done the right way and done the right way the first time. So now there's no normal, just regular x-rays. This is all done through diagnostic imaging. Well, there are regular x-rays. And, and x-rays are a, uh, a, many times a starting point. And, and a lot of times what we'll look for is we'll take dynamic x-rays as, as people are moving. Uh, we'll ask them to bend forwards or bend backwards. And we want to see how the bones of the spine are moving in relationship to each other, whether they're moving smoothly and, and as the, the body is designed or whether we see some of these, these bones of the spine sliding back and forth on each other, sliding laterally, or we look for curvatures of the spine. You know, the is this based gives on us, age? No, not based on it has age. Has nothing to do with age. It's it's not based on age. You know, in our in our in our practice and in the spine world generally, we see a a, a peak of two really different ages with two different populations. The we see younger patients, and when I talk about younger, I'm talking about probably 20 to 40, 45. And those individuals generally have disc-related issues or they have injuries related to athletics or sports that they're playing. And then at about the age of 65, we, we get another peak of uh, 65 and, and older. We get another peak of uh, patient population that is more related to arthritis that we've been fighting through through our entire lives. And we also run into problems of stenosis, which is a narrowing of the spinal canal or a narrowing of the channels where the nerves exit the spinal canal. Wow. So it's male or female? Doesn't you know, it, it doesn't matter. It, there's not necessarily a, a predominance of uh, male or female in these problems. It can be young, old, male, female doesn't matter. I think what's so great about your practice, you strictly do spines only, you know, nothing else. We are a very focused factory, and we're proud of that. Uh, we really consider ourselves a, a one-stop shop uh, where anything we can take care of anybody that has just a simple muscular strain all the way to the, the largest multi-level surgical fusions that you can think of, and we offer everything in between. We have a, uh, within our practice, we have an electrodiagnostics lab. We have a level two in-office surgical uh, center. We have a, our own physical therapy department, which focuses only on disorders of the spine. Uh, and we also have, uh, for those patients that are on controlled substances, we also have a um, high complexity CLIA lab which allows us to make sure that the patients that are on controlled substances are doing that safely. Don't you have a clinic, a private
practice down in the Keys? Well, we do. Because um, we get the Keys gets our show. You know, well, that's great. And, and you know, I go down to, I have a, a little practice in Marathon. We started earlier this year. And uh, I see patients there on Friday and do procedures at uh, Fisherman's Hospital down there. And, and my partner, uh, Dr. Carnes, also goes down to Marathon. Dr. Blumberg, who has a, uh, a practice, and he's had it for 15 years down in Key West, and uh, just is a, you know, has really brought the level of spinal care up uh, in the Keys uh, from being there for but so do long. Do you see many work-related injuries? You know, we do see work-related injuries, and it is uh, a part of our practice. The um, it, it's interesting that you know I I really have a, a a passion about taking care of the injured worker as well as taking care of our our military, and I think it's very important that we're able to again identify what the problem is, what is causing this patient's pain, what is the injury, and then describe you know to the patient, discuss with the patient how we're going to go about fixing this, and so we can get the injured worker back to work as quickly as we can so they can be a productive member of society. Why do we hear so much about lower back pain? What is usually the source of that? You know, that is a great question, Steve. And if we understand that 85% of the U.S. population will seek medical attention for back pain at some time in their lives, it's second only to the common cold for doctor visits. So many people have, uh, the vast majority of Americans will suffer with back pain at one time or another. And there are, the spine is a very complicated structure. We, there are bones, there are ligaments, there are discs, there are muscles, tendons, there are the spinal cord, there's neural structures. There's all these different joints and it, it's a, a very complex structure. So answering what is the most common cause of back pain, one, depends slightly on the age group. Yes. And two, depends on the individual and how they their back pain presents and what is the um what is their particular pathology well see i didn't tell you is we have account on twitter and we tell people what shows we have coming up you're not going to believe what the number one question is what is the number one question steve lower back pain okay who do i go to do I go to you? Do I go to an orthopedic surgeon? Do I go to a chiropractor? How do I know who to go to? You know, Steve, what I look for and what I you know refer my family to is I want to send my family or my patients, and whether it's spine-related or whether it's orthopedic-related or whether it's heart-related, I want to send them to somebody that only focuses on that. Got you. And you want to, I want to make sure that when I send a patient out or a family member out to go see another physician, that they're fellowship trained, that they've had extra training specifically in what they do. Kind of board so certified. Board certified. You know, in our practice, we're all board certified. I hold two board certifications. Uh, Dr. Blumberg holds a, an orthopedic. That means you did a fellowship. That means you have extra training. Well, no, it's, it, there's extra training, which is the fellowship. But the board certification is testing and qualifications on top of the extra training. Okay. So board certification is exceptionally important. Fellowship training and practicing what that you practicing within that extra training. It's the difference between an internship or an internist and a cardiologist. If you have a heart problem, well, you know what? You may want to go directly to the cardiologist and not necessarily look at the, the internist. So we had five people ask that same question. Okay. So they must have had lower back pain, yeah. but I could understand. So who do I go to? Right. And really what you're saying is this is all you do. This is it. And, you know, we're passionate about it. I absolutely love coming to work every day. I can imagine. I love my patients. And it, it, it's so gratifying to really help people and to get them back to really looking at, at getting them back to a pain-free life and allowing them to do the things that they want to do. I bet you see a few people walk in bent over. It, well, that we do. That we do. And, and whether they're bent over, whether they have, they're shifted off to the side or whether they're limping, 
Um, it is something that we see on a daily basis. And our goal is to get them upright, to get them walking normally, and to get them out of pain. Well, we're here with Dr. Dalton. He's with the Florida Spine Specialist. Give everybody your phone number before we go to break. You know, our office phone number is 954-771-2551. You've got a beautiful website. Give everybody your website address. So it is, um, I want to make sure I get the exact right address because we've gone through this a couple of different times. www.floridaspinespecialists.com. Yes, plural. Okay, we're going to go to break. We come back. We're going to come back. I've got so many questions for you, Dr. Dalton, and I'm sure, because I sometimes I try to think about questions. If I was listening to the show, what I would want to ask. So we're going to go to break. We'll be right back. Florida Spine Specialists are proud of their results and their industry-leading success rate. At Florida Spine Specialists, they're outcome-focused, which means their goal is to provide a treatment program that will enable you to return to an active, healthy life. Florida Spine Specialists provides custom treatment programs to return you to your active life quickly and safely. They're highly skilled. Multidisciplinary team includes doctors dedicated to non-surgical approaches, surgeons specializing in advanced minimally invasive procedures with the best history of successful outcomes, on-site physical therapists, a psychologist to provide counseling, a team of medical support people who provide the best of compassionate care, and a terrific administrative staff to help you navigate the complexities of insurance coverage. Florida Spine Specialist, state-of-the-art, 17,000-square-foot facility is fully dedicated to spinal care. Florida Spine Specialist's leading-edge technology means you get the best medical treatment possible. Call the Florida Spine Specialist today at 888-492-3392. So I'm sitting here with Dr. Dalton, Dr. Harold Dalton of the Florida Spine Specialist. Boy, when it comes to backs, everybody either had a problem themselves, a family member, and I actually used to have lower back problems. It is so painful. You can't, I mean, it's almost like it takes your breath away. You know, it, Steve, I got to agree with you because I have myself have, have suffered with uh, low back issues. I can tell you that uh, I have a congenitally narrow spinal canal which makes me, as well as other people who have that disorder, sus- more susceptible to injuries than most. And I've suffered herniated discs. I've got arthritis. I've got degenerative disc disease. And, you know, I've had times where it's been incredibly difficult to, you know, put on my shoes or get dressed and just the simple daily activities of life. Uh, but again, with the appropriate diagnosis and the appropriate treatment, I can do anything I want. Does insurance cover most of this? It does. And uh, we take a, a variety of insurances, and, and I know that changes all the time with, within different medical practices, but I'd, I'd recommend to call the office if there's any particular questions on uh, insurances. Now, when someone comes in for the first time, how long should they plan to be there for the first consultation? Well, what we really look at is, uh, as far as time goes, probably about an hour. Okay. Because we want to make sure, again, as we talked about, we want to be able to sit down and talk with a patient and really understand how their spine, their pain, the, the problems they're having are affecting their life. And then we, we go through a detailed physical examination. We'll either acquire images or get images and then once we end up with the appropriate diagnosis, there's other things we might do. Uh, we may consider further diagnostic tests, such as EMG and nerve conduction studies. We may consider specific type of nerve blocks or diagnostic nerve blocks to help us determine exactly what is a pain generator and what is not. So we have physical a whole, therapy come in. It, it really does. And, you know, as a uh, physiatrist, someone who's an expert in physical medicine and rehabilitation, it is really our goal from the non-surgical side to get an accurate diagnosis, then to decrease the patient's pain by the multiple tools that we have available to us. And the reason we do that is so we can get them to therapy to work on getting them stronger. I look at MRIs all day. And what I see 
in the vast majority of patients is a tremendous amount of weakness within the spinal musculature. And when the muscles of the spine are weak, it puts more pressure on the bones and the discs and the joints and causes them to wear out faster. And so the goal from the, the pain management standpoint and, and what we do is to decrease the pain. I describe it to my patients as putting the fire out and then we need to get to physical therapy so that we can rebuild the house. So can arthritis attack the spine? Absolutely. Oh, wow. You know, there are uh, joints in the spine that are called facet joints. And at each level of the spine, you have two facet joints. And in the lumbar spine, there are five levels in the does thoracic spine. Does it wear spine. the spine away like it, it does like in a knee? or It doesn't wear the spine away. These joints are about the size of knuckles. They're not big joints, but they have to absorb a tremendous amount of force. And in osteoarthritis, and that's really what we're talking about here, it's you know the force of gravity over time over a, uh, a joint. That joint wants to spread that force of gravity out. And so that joint will enlarge. It won't necessarily erode, it will enlarge. Well, the problem in the spine when these joints enlarge it will cause pressure on the spinal canal. It will cause pressure on the spinal nerves, causing stenosis. And whether it's the arthritic joints causing pain themselves, which we've, we have treatments for, we treat this all the time, or whether it's the resulting bone growth because of that arthritis causing problems with the nerves, we deal with that on a, a daily basis. So if I come in and my problem is it's from arthritis, let's mm -hmm. say, I'm in pain. Mm -hmm. How long am I looking at before I start that pain starts easing off? Well, if we understand the people with arthritic pain, particularly arthritic spine pain, are usually real stiff and sore in the morning. They have a very difficult time uh, getting out of bed. They walk around for a, a period of time trying to get things loosened up. Generally, they take a shower in the morning, things get a little bit better, and they go about their day. But if they overdo things, it all gets flared up again. And then towards the evening, as they're, they're wearing down, they start to get stiff and sore again, and it becomes this vicious cycle. So we've got to look at breaking that cycle. And whether we use uh, techniques of diagnostic nerve blocks which is where we put a tiny amount of local anesthetic right by where the nerves are that control those arthritic joints to determine whether or not that's a pain generator or not. And then if it is, we can go in there with a specialized type of needle and the very tip of that needle heats up and we can cauterize those, ner those nerves and hopefully get rid of the patient's arthritic pain in the spine forever. Wow, forever, wow. Forever. Now, it doesn't happen in everybody. I'm sure it does. And these are peripheral nerves, and they have a tendency to grow back. Everybody's different. Everybody's different. And if they do grow back, we can repeat. The, they generally go back in about three to six months. And if we do, we can repeat the procedure and give them another you know, three to six months of, of pain relief. Is no, it painful? Not painful. Because you think about getting an injection you know, in your back. Absolutely. And I've had injections in my spine. I've given thousands. We do about 15... Uh, injections procedures a day. I've been doing this for 18 years. Um, so we've given a lot of uh, injections. And quite frankly, the worst part of the injection is when I numb up the skin. And that burns for six to 10 seconds, just like when you go to the dentist, right. and they numb up the jaw. That's generally the worst part of the procedure. Uh, we use a lot of numbing medications. In some cases, there are some procedures and, and some patients require sedation. We can give IV sedation if necessary. Uh, but the vast majority of the procedures are so quick, so fast, they, they generally take about five minutes. Wow. And, yeah, go ahead. So, what, so we're, we're coming towards the end of the show, and I know people, is it? Heat or cold? When you ah. you're back, you've got a back problem. Yep. It always seem to happen at night when you're trying to go to bed, or you get up in the morning, you stand up, and you go, "Oh, yeah." Heat or cold? So that's a great question, and it has to come down to timing. If there's an injury, you knew you hurt yourself, you right. lifted something up that was too heavy, or you twisted wrong, then using ice for the first 24 to 36 hours. Works well. No heating pack right away. Not immediately. 
at 36 hours or longer, then we can start using heat. Sometimes we'll intersperse from 36 to 72 hours, ice and heat using contrast therapy. And then generally after 72 hours, we look solely at using heat. Now that's for an acute injury. Okay. If we've got chronic pain, and this is something that happens day after day after day, heat may be a better way to go, but some people get relief with ice. So I tell my patients, look, if it's been going on for a long time, whichever feels better. Someday it may be ice, someday it may be heat. Try the different modalities. Now what about aspirin or... So oh, aspirin is in the class of I mean, what we is call, it Advil or yeah, if it's... So, as we look at non-steroidal anti-inflammatories, which are Advil, Aleve, aspirin, um, all these chemicals, all these these pills, all work about the same. Okay. And they all work in the same way. Because you're going, to, what do I, which one right. do I take? They inhibit inflammation from occurring. Now, everybody's biochemistry is different. So Advil may work better for me, but a leave or naperson may work better for you. you. So everybody's a little bit different in how they respond to the same chemicals that work the same way, but the biochemistry in everyone gotcha. is a little bit different. Give everybody your phone number. You know, our, our phone number at Florida Spine Specialists is 954 771 Two five five one, and we look forward to your call. Yeah, and listen, any kind of back problem, this is all that you do. This Nothing is it. Nothing else. So this should tell you right there. And you know what? If you, there's someone out there who can relieve that pain, if you're in Palm Beach, it's worth the ride to Fort Lauderdale. Definitely. I'm so glad you're with us now. And I told you it goes by fast. It does, Steve. Thank and you. you'll be back with us next month. Uh, it's Florida Spine Specialist. That's plural. And we're going to go to break. When we come back, we've got our n another new show, Immigration Law. We'll be right back. Florida Spine Specialists are proud of their results and their industry-leading success rate. At Florida Spine Specialists, they're outcome-focused, which means their goal is to provide a treatment program that will enable you to return to an active, healthy life. Florida Spine Specialists provides custom treatment programs to return you to your active life quickly and safely. Their highly skilled, multidisciplinary team includes doctors dedicated to non-surgical approaches, surgeons specializing in advanced minimally invasive procedures with the best history of successful outcomes, on-site physical therapists, a psychologist to provide counseling, a team of medical support people who provide the best of compassionate care, and a terrific administrative staff to help you navigate the complexity of insurance coverage. Florida Spine Specialists, state-of-the-art, 17,000-square-foot facility is fully dedicated to spinal care. Florida Spine Specialists' leading-edge technology means you get the best medical treatment possible. Call the Florida Spine Specialist today at 888-492-3392.